Hello everybody, Torgal here and welcome back to another Modern Skyblock 2 episode here on the FTOG community server. Today is a shorter and special episode because today I want to talk about how you can uh, auto shut off your automations via Redstone. We have more and more people on the server that are starting to set up automations similar to this. Um, I call this a primitive automation because it is not in a closed system, meaning items are placed in the world, they get broken, entities are being generated. And then, of course, if these entities start piling up, they're causing server lag and they're affecting everybody. And our admins, moderators uh, need to go around and clean up people's messes. Unfortunately, we'll find more and more of those. And I noticed that barely anybody makes use of Redstone to govern their system. So um, I had this running since shortly after the episode when I set this up. And I was going to show it in my next regular episode. But I decided to separate it so we can link this uh, to all new applicants for our community server. So they must watch this so they cannot have an excuse that they don't know how to set it up or anything. And they can also just copy it one to one if needed. Let me just uh, explain real quick what the system does. So we have a cobble gen down here in the basement. The cobble comes up here into this uh, drawer. The system can never overflow, okay? Because the um, mechanical miners down there, when they mine something, it goes into their internal inventory. And when the internal inventory is full, they just stop, okay? And the drawer over here, when it's full, it's full. So nothing can overflow on the cobble part here. And then we're pumping it over here and we're breaking the cobble and it gets sucked in gravel form right there. Then we place the gravel and when it gets broken, it gets sucked up in sand and flint. And on the other side, we're taking the cobble and we're smelting it into smooth stone, which we are crushing over here into dirty gems. And then the dirty gems get automatically washed over here. And then they get sucked up and put into the storage system at the very end. All right, we're going to start talking about the right side first because that's a little bit easier. Um, and we're going to start from the end coming in. Now, what I want the system to do is when the sand is full, stop breaking the gravel. If the gravel is full, stop breaking the cobble. Okay, that way I can never have items starting to fly around here or uh, accumulate if either of these drawers are full. Now, some people might say, why don't you just put a void upgrade into the sand, for example? And into the gravel well i want the system to not just keep going because the sand for example gets generated a lot faster than the gravel gets because it takes longer to break the cobble than it takes to break the gravel so i simply want to turn this off i do have a void upgrade down here on the flint so if the flint ever gets full then it will just keep sucking it up and void it i don't really care about the flint i just use it to make gunpowder but how do you do this? The, the easiest way is to give the storage drawer a redstone upgrade. And what that does is it has the, red, uh, the, the drawer emit a redstone signal depending on how full it is. When it's empty, no redstone. When it's full, 15. You know, and anything in between. If it's half full, uh, probably a signal of 7 or maybe 8 um, and so on. And I'm sending that... I'm reading that with a comparator, the comparator with the two redstone torches here. That's the side, that's the back, okay? It reads this redstone signal and passes it through by default. So if it was a four, it would make this redstone trail a four. But I only want it to emit a redstone signal when it actually receives a 15. And that's the job of a comparator. You can compare a signal from the side. So if you look on the bottom right on the tooltip, this redstone trail coming to the side of this comparator is power 15, all the way on the bottom right of your screen. And I get that by simply having a lever here, right? I power this block and then the redstone becomes 15. So only if this is 15 will it emit a redstone signal over here, which then runs on top of this mechanical user, which is set to only function, when the redstone is off. So as soon as this receives a redstone signal, it will stop trying to break the gravel. Now, I'm going to stand right here. And if you guys look at this trail here, when I take out one piece of sand, it turns off, it broke it, it sucked it up, it's full again and on, right? So if I take out three or four, it will keep breaking that until it's full. And then the comparator turns on again and disables the setup over here. And you guys see over here, of course, same way, because it had to make up the gravel that we just used. Now, the same way we shut off the sand, we also shut off the gravel over here. 
Only difference is that I had to move it around a little bit. That's why there's a little bit more redstone. Because I don't have the room to run this redstone signal in from the side. Like I have over here. Because right here I cannot place a block uh, or redstone signal. And the same here because I would turn these off. Now, the way I did it is I'm simply reading the redstone signal here with the comparator. And I send it out, right? Well, right now it's 15 because it's full. And then I send it down here to another comparator that actually checks, hey, is this actually full? Okay, so this is 15 and one block later, it's 14. So that means I needed to compare this comparator to 14. Same principle, just coming from the side, but instead of one redstone trail, I have two. This lever makes this redstone trail 15 and then after one, it's 14. So 14 from behind is equal or higher to 14 from the side. I pass, I turn the redstone on over here, which then goes over a block right here on top of these two mechanical users. I had to go up because I cannot lay a redstone right here on the transfer pipe. So a lot of different setups, you know, you need to run the redstone a little bit different. Um, so best way is to always just leave yourself a little bit more room. Luckily, I did leave myself one block space between all the different setups. So um, it wasn't on purpose, but I, I, I just got lucky there. Okay, otherwise I had to move it around. But anyway, so by the time it gets over here, it's 8 and 8, or 8 and 7, sorry, but that is enough. These guys are set to, again to redstone off, and the other guy over here as well, so they're not breaking any more cobble. Now, on this one here, you will most likely always have one gravel laying around here, because if I take out one, the signal turned off. You guys see it? It's now slowly breaking the cobble. It takes a lot longer. There we go. And it can only suck up one. Because I only took out one, so the other one lays here. But it doesn't matter. If one item lays in the world, it doesn't hurt the server, okay? That's no problem. But again, same principle than the sand. Only reason was that I had to spread it out a little bit. And um, But again, I'm simply comparing how full is this to a redstone signal from the side. And then disable the mechanical users. And now we'll talk about the left side over here. And the two biggest problems that we're encountering on the server... Um, with item spillages and that is number one right here when when people break the smooth stone and the crate right here or chest or anything that sucks those items up gets full the items just lay around in the world and they keep breaking it and the other one is if the storage system either is full or the chest they suck up the clean uh, gems and so on up gets full then the items right here start spilling so these two right here are the number one problem on our server and probably most people's setups and now before we go into this i wanted to explain something about comparators and how they read chests okay and that is if you look at this chest right here every single slot is filled okay with one piece and that only gives us a redstone signal look on the bottom right of the tooltip power of one but this one here only has two slots with a whole stack each. And this one gives us a power of two. Because the comparator actually reads the, the total possible storage of a chest. So every one of these is only 1 64th filled. While this one here of 27 possible slots, two are completely filled. And that's why this one is a lot less when it comes to redstone power one than this one. Okay, so I hope that makes sense how they read it. And that brings us over here to this first one. That is the first one I'm going to explain right here. What happens when this chest right here gets full or in my in my example here, the storage crate. And I have this simulated currently by simply not pumping it out of it with this uh, ember pipe, right? So what I'm simulating is that this mechanical user is full for whatever reason and this causes this one here to start backing up and getting full. And you guys see, there's quite a lot of items in here, right? Even though only two of them are full stacks, the last one almost full. And then we have a couple that are around half or a little bit more, but mostly just one or two items per stack, right? And I came up with a lot of testing over here that the redstone signal of four seems to be the best one to go by, okay? If you go with five, then you could already have a big item spillage. You could honestly go as little as two because in a in this scenario right here in my setup the washing of the gems is a lot faster than breaking the smooth stone so 
when my system runs here, there is never any items sitting in here. As soon as they get in here, they're getting pumped over into the mechanical user here. So this is always empty. But because I, I needed to give it some kind of a signal, I went with four back here. So in case there's ever some kind of a slowdown, it will still stop before it starts overflowing, right? So signal four, three, two, one. And I'm sending that into a repeater that powers this block right here, which then turns this mechanical user off because when it has redstone, it turns it off, right? So I hope that makes sense why you only get a redstone signal of four, even though this crate over here looks very full, but it's simply because of the things that I explained over here. Now, the other part that a lot of people have item spillage is this chest right here that they, they use to suck up the, the washed gems right here, the clean gems, right? So when this chest here gets full, I want this mechanical user right here, uh, not mechanical user, the, the item extractor to stop pumping items into this mechanical user, right? Um, so it will stop washing. And because I explained to you guys earlier that the washing happens a lot faster than the, the, the breaking of the smooth stone, that means this mechanic user is most of the times empty, or maybe it has one or two items in it, that's it. So as soon as I stop this, there will only be one or two more items being washed, okay, before the system is off. Um, and the way I'm doing it over here is, again, I'm reading the chest with a comparator. Everything starts with the comparator. And I'm simply running the fill level across this right here. And right now I have it simulated with a, a lever right here because I needed that to stop the system from pumping because I simulated that this user was full for our test over here, right? But we can also use the same one right now to just simulate that this chest is full. But um, let's count here real quick. So we have one redstone trail, two, three, and then it goes into here. So this chest right here, I'm actually checking if it is a redstone level of three. This one over here, we do four. And I told you guys, as soon as there is items collecting in here, there's a problem because the, the node usually pumps it out as fast as it gets it, okay? Especially later on, if we have a chance to add speed upgrades to this, then there will never be anything in here. And when it starts accumulating, there is a problem and I want it shut off. And I needed to reverse this signal, okay? Because the embers item extractor here runs when it has a redstone signal. So I have a torch here that normally powers this redstone trail and has this pipe pumping, right? So when I get the signal down here, I send it up here to disable this by sending it to a repeater, which powers this block, which turns this redstone torch off, okay? If you use a transfer node here instead of the item extractor, then you don't want it reversed. Then you simply pass the signal through and send a redstone signal to a node here, okay? To disable it. But I'm using the item extractor in my setup here because I found that the node takes too long. I want the items to come over here very fast. As I told you, I'm washing it faster than I'm breaking it. But there's times when you pick up to four items and then it takes a few seconds for the four items to be finished transferring over here because we do not have access to speed upgrades in the nodes yet. So that is why I'm using this. So now as soon as I break this lever, this redstone signal here will turn off. You guys are going to see that. And... Actually, did I pick it up? No, it's probably sitting in this node, yes, because I don't have a slot for it. And you guys see, this redstone signal turned off, torch is on, and the items automatically are already getting sucked over here. And you guys see how fast this is. And now the washing process starts. And this brings us to the last and final part. There is a problem in this mod pack, and I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to blame the mod pack, okay? Um, but we're having this problem in this mod pack. Um, I don't know if it's maybe Forge or anything, but there's a problem with water updates at times that we ran into. And I, I seem to have fixed it in my example here. Um, when I or originally set this up, there was only a three wide water source in front of this mechanical user. This mechanical user is the one that fills the buckets. You guys are going to see a bucket going out here and it already filled it. It's already there again. Okay. Um that sometimes it picked up this one water source block here and it didn't form again, even though there's a source block to the left and there's a source block underneath here as well. You guys see that? It formed again. 
And I seem to have fixed that by adding another row. So now I can make an endless water source via this row to the left and to the right, via this 2x2 two two, or via this 2x2. Two two. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to get into how water source blocks work really. But anyway, so let's say there is a problem in your setup. You do not get full water buckets anymore. It's empty. You guys see the redstone turned off, right? What that does is that this mechanical user here only works on redstone on okay so only if there's water in this cauldron which i'm reading with the comparator and you need to have this repeater simply just to so this redstone here does it doesn't connect around this way right i'm i'm repeating the signal so it can go all the way to over here and right there so if there is water this guy will right click and try to wash otherwise it stops okay and this one over here is simply only for noise reduction this guy here only works if there's no redstone signal meaning the cauldron is empty because otherwise it constantly right clicks and you constantly have the splashing sounds which i find annoying right and so that's why i govern this one here and say hey only try to right click if this one is actually empty which we're gonna see in a second there we go redstone is off it takes a second boom done um, if you don't have a TPS issue like we do have here, we mostly only run about 10 TP, 10 PPS, that's it. Um, then this will happen a lot faster because this redstone signal also turns off this node. Okay, so this node doesn't try to pump out the empty bucket, which goes so fast that you cannot even see it in here, when there's actually water needed. So it takes the empty one out and then underneath here, by the way. From, from the side of this one underneath into this one here is where I'm sending the full buckets. But if you want to know how I set this up, just watch the episode before this one where we actually set this up and I'll show you the filters. But anyway, so I hope that makes sense here. This is not really needed because when this one ever gets full, this one will stop pumping over. And if this one ever gets full, the whole system over here stops, right? I'm sorry. When this one gets full, this one here will back up. It will stop. If this one gets full, it will stop pumping via this pipe into that one. I hope I didn't confuse you here with the last part. But um, this one right here is just simply noise reduction and also stop trying to right click when there is no water in it. That is it. Okay. So that is my 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 redstone um, auto shut off system that I have here. And I hope it made sense to you and that you um, guys will implement that yourself because it's very easy. You know, you just need a little bit of nether quartz. Uh, and redstone and sticks and smooth stone to do this okay that's all the parts you need to do this uh, levers you can just go with regular vanilla levers if you don't want to use these from embers of course but anyways that is it for this episode and i hope that you were able to learn something and that you can help make yours or our community servers if this works on any server even in single player if you chunk load um and you're out of uh in another dimension or something and you just don't want to have an item spillage in your single player you can still use this as well anyways thanks for watching and until next time take care stay safe and bye bye